Josh Green here for 20 Towers with Martin Adams in Burlington. Martin, great to see you here. And so many familiar names as well. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of us here today, I think. Yeah, and tomorrow. Yeah, be good fun. And at the World Trophy, you told me that you had 156 in qualifying and you made it to the first round against Scott Mitchell. It didn't quite get through. Are you starting to feel uh, the form pick up? Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, yes. Um, there's still some uh, shaky stuff in there, but uh, you know, the 156 was quite a dream shot out against uh, Jamie Cahaven, so I mean, that helped out a lot in the very first game of the qualifier, so yeah. But, you know, that first round just screwed up 1-2-1 one, one at the end. Royally screwed it up, but there you go. And what about Jim Williams? I think it was such a, a relief for him to finally get that first major title under his belt. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I mean, considering that uh, he got lots of things going on in the background at home, you know, with the impending birth of the uh, first child, I thought he was absolutely amazing. Held himself together really well. And yeah, to pick up your first major title, yeah, it's wonderful stuff. Uh, I think the venue in Blackburn is a uh, a perfect example of what can be done with darts because although it was the first year, the crowd really picked up on the Saturday and Sunday and although they've got it for three years, that could really progress. Oh yes, it could progress, yeah. I mean, the one thing unfortunate about it is it always seems to have had different venues every year. So, could you I, take as I understand it, we've got uh, sort of like a three-year deal there, so we, we're definitely there next year, so which is really, really good and that will aid with the crowd to pick up, that's for sure. A lot of people thought there would be a bit of a hole with a few notable names leaving the BDO at the beginning of 2019. But to see the likes of Martin Clearmacher coming through, Jim Williams and Richard Vainsford, they're really producing now. Well, yeah, I mean, this is, this is sort of like something that the BDO has always managed to do. Uh, we've had players leave for you know, several years, you know, years gone by. Um, you know, had them, I think the biggest bunch was probably eight, I think, in one go. But yeah. They get replaced by other players that have got great talent and they come along and make their name. So it, it, it's no different, it's the, that's what the video does, it produces great players. And I need to ask about Leighton Bennett. He's one hell of a player at just 13 years of age, he's already playing on the senior tour. Well yeah, it's, um, it's unusual, that's for sure, to have a young, youngster like that playing so well on our senior tour, that's for sure. Uh, and yeah, he is a great player, um, but he's got to have a, a little bit of a look at his attitude. Because sometimes when he loses, the attitude is not good. And he's got to work on that for sure. You know, you have to lose with grace and dignity. And the one thing that uh, the great Leighton Roos said, you've got to learn how to lose before you learn how to win. And do you think, being a 13-year-old, it's a bit of a strange environment for a 13-year-old? Do you think that's good for him or bad for him mentally? Oh, that's hard to say. I don't really know the answer to that question. Um, hopefully it'll be good for him rather than bad for him. But uh, yeah, he's going to have to suffer his knocks, he will get them, we all do, and he's just got to learn to uh, take it on the chin and lose, as I say, with grace and dignity. And of course the Grand Slam of Darts is coming up in a couple of months' time. Yeah. You were selected there a couple of times and the crowd absolutely loved you. What can that do for a player? It can lift you um, if you enjoy it and you do well, or it can crucify you if you just go up there and you get beaten up every time. Uh, that can be quite crucial for a player. But uh, yeah, I loved it. I just uh, approached it like a massive exhibition because everybody's all, all in such a party mood. So you treat it as an exhibition. And yeah, you have a great time and play, play good darts. Yeah. So, Martin, I just want your view on the women's qualifiers for the Grand Slam of Darts. For example, could McCurry really compete in that? Well, Yes and no. Yes, yes. I'm sure she's got the game, and she could do. But you have to ask yourself: Would that just be a novelty? The ladies' control there. The ladies playing the Grand Slam. The ladies. I'm not sure. Maybe they'll go for that, but they may do. Control it's hard to say. But yeah, it'd be great to see Makuru competing. That would be good, or even Lisa Ashton, because we know Lisa's quality. So yeah, it would be good to see it. But I'm not sure it will actually happen. And uh, just finally for you, looking ahead to the World Championships at the O2 Indigo. How close are you to qualifying and, and do you think you can get there in time? Well, yes I do. I do think I can get there. If they picked it today, yes I would be in. But of course there are four events still to go. We've got today, the British Open Classic, tomorrow the British Open, and there's the Bruges Open and I can't remember what the other one's called, but it's in Bruges as well. And, uh, no, I can't remember now. Uh, so there's four events. There's a Category B and a Category A next weekend in Belgium. So, and then there's the cut-off on the 30th of September. So fingers crossed, we'll make it. 
Thank you very much. Thank you.